I got traded to the Kansas City Royals in 1979. Came from the, the California Angels. And I came to a team that had George Brett, Willie Wilson, Amos Sotis, Hal McCray, a bunch of stars. And when I got traded, John Sherho said I was the first baseman for the Kansas City Royals. Went to the World Series in uh, 1980. I made a record in the World Series. I hit two home runs in game one on my birthday. Two home runs in game four. And that was the first time a player in the World Series history had had multiple home games in the World Series. I also came to a, an environment where there were guys on the team that liked to party. And I became a part of that group. And eventually in like 1981, we uh, met this guy in Oakland Park, Kansas, and he started inviting us over to his house and we started using cocaine. In 1984, I didn't start the baseball season until 45 days after the season had started, which was May 15th. And I was behind everybody. I never caught up. 1985 was the year the Kansas City Royals won the World Series. And if you recall, uh, the Kansas City Royals played the Blue Jays before they played the St. Louis Cardinals. And Toronto, the same team I was on, had a 3-1 to lead. And the Royals came back. And then St. Louis, they had a three to one, St. Louis had a, a three to one lead and the Royals came back. So both of those teams that I was a part of ended up being in the, uh, the championship series while I was down in the minor leagues uh, trying to make a comeback. You know, I was a, a tremendous center. I was a, a tremendous fornicator. I had a girl in uh, every time. And the thing was that I wanted to satisfy the desires of my flesh. And being a major league baseball, you was in he had the opportunity to do, do that day in and day out. 1985, uh, after the season, I couldn't find a job the next year. So I ended up going to Mexico. And I had one of the best years ever in Mexico. I owned uh, the best batting average record down there. I hit 454. I hit 46 home runs. And I drove in 154 runs and still couldn't find a job in the United States. Then I went to win a ball and played, and a team from Japan sent a, re a representative to Mexico to invite me to J Japan and play. And a team from Japan offered me a contract of $300,000. I was making $4,000 a month in Mexico. My last contract in the big leagues was $600,000. This is why a lot of times when we make decisions in our lives, those decisions can have an effect on our life years down the line. When it came down, when it came time for me to get a working visa, I couldn't get one to work in Japan because I had that misdemeanor conviction on my record that I got while I was a member of the Kansas City Royals, which devastated me. So my second year, I went to play in Mexico. I caught hepatitis and I had to come home. And I was sitting at home not doing anything really. So I couldn't be a major league baseball player anymore. I couldn't go to Japan and play. So I decided to start back drinking alcohol. And the alcohol, they say a drug is a drug is a drug. So alcohol gave me the urge to do my drug of choice, which, which was cocaine. This is 1987. I had been clean and sober since 1983. The next four years, that's what I did. I played baseball in Mexico and I smoked cocaine. Um, I had two little girls out of wedlock while I was playing down in Mexico. Then finally in 1991, I decided to, to retire, mainly because I felt like drugs was more important in my life than playing baseball. So they decided to send a female to my home. I didn't know it at the time. She was an undercover officer. I built a relationship with her. Eventually she asked me to get drugs for her. And back then they had this cocaine versus crack law, 101 ratio. Don't have time to really explain that, but each transaction was powder cocaine. And she asked me to, to cook it up for her. So when she left my house, she had rock or crack cocaine, which carried a, a stiff penalty. 
But make a long story short, I got drugs for her like four times. And after the fourth time, it brought the total amount to over 50 grams, which made, I fell up on a mandatory minimum 10 year sentence. So they came and kicked my dough in and they arrested me. Went to trial, I lost. I received a sentence of 20 years and eight months. And at my sentencing, the judge, this is what he said. He said, Mr. Akins, you used to be a prominent baseball player here in Kansas City, and you trashed your life. And he gave me the, the maximum sentence that he could give me. So after two years, I rededicated my life to Jesus Christ. I started going to chapel. I started getting up in chapel, sh sharing my testimony. During that period of time, I did an inventory of my life. I started to develop a Christian life while I was incarcerated. And I finally accepted responsibility for what I had done because for the longest period of time, in years, I blamed the undercover officer for me being in prison. And I became a better dad, like I said before, while I was incarcerated to my little girls. I didn't realize this transformation was taking place basically until I got my sentence reduced. When we walk in the ways of the Lord, which I thought I was doing at the time, God would bless our lives. And when I got my sentence reduced, it's just it reinforced in me that, that God was real and that this is the path that I need to continue on when I get out of prison. And so far I have. And the Bible says that when praises go up, blessings come down. I don't want those blessings to stop in my life. So I, I continue to praise God, but that wasn't the most, the most important thing is that accepting Jesus Christ as my personal savior allows me to have a home with God when I'm no longer here on earth. Hey Willie, this past 16 years we've hired many of people, signed lots of players that have made a great impact to our organization. But I can't think of many that have done what you've done for the Kansas City Royals. You have brought heart and soul to this organization. We're thankful for you. God is doing amazing things with you and your life and your family. And we're so thankful you're a Kansas City Royal and I appreciate your friendship.